Traditional software organizations have spent the last decade uh, adding sales headcount as revenue targets increase, fine-tuning cold calling strategies and pushing reps to always be closing. But the truth is that the most successful IPOs and fast-growing private companies of the past five years use a cost-efficient product-led growth strategy. Our next speaker is Devin McDonald, who is a partner at a venture firm in Boston called OpenView Ventures, where she's been for the last nine years. And she is going to share how to take your lead generation efforts into a product-led machine that will generate predictable growth and revenue. So give it up for Devin. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Just want to make sure I've got the right button here. So it's so great to see you all. What a great group. Uh, this is my first time at a traction conference. This is my first time in Vancouver. And I must say, this is a beautiful city. Um, so delighted to be here and delighted to be speaking to you today about product-led growth and what the hell that means. Um, and how, regardless of, of your business and who you're selling to, you can adopt product-led strategies to grow faster and grow more efficiently, something investors love. So to kick things off, um, I'm going to paint a, a picture for you of, of OpenView. So we are a venture capital firm. We're based in Boston, and we invest exclusively in B2B software. And all the companies that we invest in are also at what we call the expansion stage. And expansion stage is the company can really demonstrate to us that they've got product market fit. Um, at this particular point in their growth, they're hyper-focused on customer acquisition. Um, and they're also hyper-focused on hiring at scale, um, designing more complex organizations with management layers and more specialization. Um, so if you look at our portfolio, some of the logos you might recognize, some are kind of mainstream like the Expensifies. Um, we invest in some companies that are more uh, vertical specific. Um, so if you look at like a VTS that sells specifically to commercial real estate and helps improve the working lives, um, which is our mission, of uh, folks in that industry, both landlords and brokers. Um, and then you also have companies um, like a Datadog, um, which is sold to companies uh, large and small across a variety of industries. So we, we are open to investments in all sorts of companies, but again, it has to be B2B software, it has to be expansion stage, and the final um, component of our investment thesis, we want to invest at a point at which the companies are focused on building out their North American customer base, because that's where we feel like we can, we can really add value. So back to product-led. What does it mean, um, and why are we so excited about it? So product-led growth is really when the product serves as the primary driver of uh, user acquisition, expansion, and retention. So the product serves as the primary driver. And uh, just a quick show of hands, how many folks in the room use Slack? Wow. Uh, how many folks in the room believe that their organization started using Slack because a sales rep called into their head of product or head of marketing or CFO and said, we got to talk. I've got the perfect communication collaboration tool for you. You got to check out Slack. No, it just didn't happen. Um, uh, Slack is an outstanding, a phenomenal product-led growth company. Um, it used different strategies to uh, create a viral component to its go-to-market strategy um, and essentially sold itself. So a little bit more. So product-led growth is a term that OpenView is, um, is trying to coin. We're trying to make fetch happen, if you will. Um, but you know, there are other buzzwords that are sort of being thrown out there um, that encompass product-led growth. So consumerization of, of IT, viral growth, virality, uh, freemium models, product qualified leads, uh, bottom up, bottoms up sales. But at the end of the day, you know, for us, we're really excited about product-led growth companies because their economic models are beautiful. And their growth rates are unbelievable. We have some companies in our portfolio that have this model. They are growing faster than we have ever seen before. Um, they have lower cost of customer acquisition. They have shorter payback periods. Um, they have greater lifetime value, or LTV. And they have faster growth rates, like I said. Um, to, to bring sort of one example 
to the table specifically, um, you look at two highly successful companies out there, Box and Dropbox. Um, I'm not going to knock on, on Box, uh, because we actually use Box at OpenView and absolutely love it. Dropbox and Box formed around the same time, mid-2000s. I think one was 2005, one was 2007, with a relatively similar value prop, but very different go-to-market models. Dropbox exhibited more of a product-led growth model. They were much more focused on the users, about getting people activated quickly without having to pay up front or pay a lot of money up front. Um, and Bo uh, Box took a different approach. They focused more on sort of the enterprise approach, sales reps selling directly to the enterprise, larger deal sizes. Now, again, both wildly successful companies by all stretch of the imaginations in the world of, of SaaS, but if you fast forward to today, they're a little bit different financially. So Dropbox, their revenue for last year was $1.1 billion. Um, and Box was a measly 500 million. No, I mean, clearly an impressive company, but, but very different, right? Um, Box is also trading, uh, I believe, at um, six times the multiple on revenue and Dropbox nine times. If you look at the differences in their spend, and this is all publicly available data, um, if you look at the differences of their spend in sales and marketing, I believe uh, Box had spent um, 80% of, uh, was on sales and marketing, 80% um, of, of their um, revenue. And then Dro uh, Dropbox, um, I believe, is around 40%. So, and, and Box has brought it down. I think they're now closer to 60% for 2017 in terms of sales and marketing spend. But they, have, they just have different models. Dropbox is definitely going more forward with the product-led approach th than Box. But PLG, product-led growth, is the new expectation. The experience um, while using your product is um, paramount. And your users, your customers, they've got options. They're smart, and they have very short attention spans. Not to make generalizations, but they do. That's just where we're headed as a society, right? And so you've got to prove very quickly, very clearly, very specifically that you can add, add value. Um, and product-led growth, is, is, it's not going away. Um, if you look back, and we just actually, we released a, a podcast yesterday in our, our Build podcast, um, featuring our, our managing partner, our founder at OpenView, Scott Maxwell, and he talked about product-led growth, and he was talking about the evolution of sales and go-to-market. And originally, you had your, um, you know, your, your large enterprise sales teams that were predominantly field sales reps, um, you know, had large quotas, they were the road warriors, um, and that, that's how you would close deals because the, the technology at that point in time was pretty complex, on-premise, um, very, very expensive, and that's just what, what it took to get the deal done. Fast forward a, a few years, inside sales started to become a real thing where you could actually close deals and pretty substantially size deals over the phone. Fast forward then a few years later, um, you look at companies like HubSpot that made things like inbound marketing a real thing, where now all of a sudden marketing was playing a key role in driving leads, creating demand, and bringing deals that were really qualified into the pipeline for your more expensive sales reps to close. And today, we've, yet, we've moved forward in that evolution. Um, we feel that right now, the product is central to successful organization success doesn't necessarily mean that sales is going away or marketing is going away. Those roles will still exist, but it's a shift in mentality and it's a shift of emphasis within an organization. So what I want to talk to you about um, are the core pillars of how product-led companies really kind of flip the switch on aspects of their business to grow faster and more efficiently. I want to first start with product. Um, so some of the core product principles that we see, um, companies both in our portfolio and outside that do exceptionally well, are they start with the real user pain. They deliver value immediately, they strip out anything uncritical, and they make the product stick. And a great example of that is Expensify. So Expensify is a company that we invested in, um, and their tagline is, we make expense reports that don't suck. You can't get any more to the point than that, right? But you can really, it resonates. Um, how many people in the room are gonna go back to their office after this conference and 
start submitting their receipts and want to get your money back from your trip here. Probably most people, right? That process really does suck. Um, but now Expensify exists where you can easily, with your mobile phone, take a picture of your receipt, populate it to the app. It will automatically extract the information for your receipt. You can submit your report right then and there and get paid the next day. It's pretty slick. And they're not trying to be anything more than that. They're trying to do one thing and do it really, really well. Um, it has a natural viral component to it. Um, it spreads within organizations. People talk about it. Most of their sales and marketing has come primarily from word of mouth. And it starts off with one individual user using, using it to capture their expense receipts for free. Other people within the organization hear about it, start spreading, and then the CFO catches wind of it and says, well, geez, this looks a lot easier, will save us a lot of time, we should probably consider this. That's product-led growth at its finest. Uh, next up, uh, marketing. So marketing principles. Enable virality internally and externally. Your product is your primary marketing channel, and you target your users, not just your buyers. And you have your users in mind, first and foremost. Um, Typeform is an example of a company that does this exceptionally well. Uh, we use Typeform at OpenView, and it all started because someone at OpenView was sent a Typeform survey, and we thought, well, damn, that's amazing. That's a really painless survey process, beautiful interface, not trying to do more than it actually does. Um, and the cool thing about Typeform is that you participate, you receive the survey, you fill out the survey, and then it prompts you um, to actually create your own Typeform. It's very easily, easy, seamless, um, and because of that, they're doing well and growing very, very efficiently without having to have a large sales force. Pricing is a huge component of a PLG model, and it's something that we spend a lot of time talking about at OpenView. Um, as part of our, um, our platform, we do help our portfolio companies with pricing strategy, given that so consistently, companies that are B2B software at the expansion stage are really struggling with how do we optimize pricing? Um, how can we be generating more money or be capturing more, um, more users and customers long term? So pricing principles to keep in mind for a truly effective product-led growth model, remove any barriers from initial usage, enforce paywalls only after value, Expand customers with scalable app, uh, expansion paths and use product data to upsell users. And Slack, they, they clearly do a phenomenal job at this. You can easily start using the technology for free. It has that viral element, whereas people within the organization naturally are pulled in for communication. But then at a certain point, once a certain amount of messages are sent, you're required to upgrade if you want to access your archive messages. Now that's a beautiful thing because the adoption is there it makes sense, people get it, they're finding value in it, and it's a no-brainer, well, of course we're gonna pay that. We couldn't live without Slack. And last but not least, sales. Um, some key sales principle. Everyone is a product evangelist. Your customer success is your North Star. You empower self-service, and you create opportunities for upsell. Calendly is one of the companies that we've invested in that does this really, really well. And what's so unique and amazing about this business is that all of the Calendly users out there become your army of sales reps. So I, it might be hard to read this, um, but I received a, a Calendly um, invitation from someone who wanted to have, have a meeting. I'm then sort of encouraged, so they point me in that direction. I'm then encouraged to select a time on this person's calendar. Calendly is advertised, not front and center, but advertised um, in their calendar. And then thereafter, in the bottom of the screen, you'll notice that, okay, it was so easy to sign up for that 30-minute meeting, and now I'm prompted to get your own Calendly page. It's free. This is the primary driver of acquisition, new acquisition for Calendly. They have a really small team, 50 people total, most of which are all product and engineering. They have an incredibly small sales team, and that sales team you really could actually just consider customer success, because they do no cold outreach. But they have people like Ashley Smith who are selling the product without even realizing it. And again, that is one thing that makes product-led growth businesses so wonderful. They're not spending a lot of money deploying capital against sales and marketing, but rather investing in the product. So 
So you might be thinking, and I, I know this is a very forward-thinking group, everyone's talking about growth and scale, so this might all be a no-brainer to you, uh, but hopefully I'm kind of bringing it together in terms that make sense, and you can go on and spread the word about product-led growth. Um, but some people might be thinking, you know, this just sounds great. Yeah, Devin, obviously that would be so great if we could be like Slack. Like, who doesn't want to be, you know, who doesn't want to go viral like Slack has gone viral? You might be thinking, this might, doesn't work for my product, this is not going to work for my, mar my market, we're just too complex. We are true enterprise, just like, I get it, but no. And I understand your point of view there, but regardless of where you are in the spectrum, if you are a Slack or some end of the opposite end of the spectrum where you've got this very large, complex sale, complex technology, you can adopt certain practices of product-led growth principles to improve efficiency, to grow faster. And there's an example of a company we invested in that did just that. This was more of an enterprise play. Logical is a technology. They're based in San Francisco. They're a legal tech. Um, they are selling to attorneys, modern legal teams, helping them with their e-discovery process. So if you can imagine an in-house legal team has lots of investigations, they're dealing with certain litigations, how can we get to the root, how, do, how can we get to resolution faster without spending so much money with our outside legal firms that are spending a lot of time to call through documents? Let's do it in one platform, let's make our outside legal, legal teams use this technology to get to resolution faster. This was a $30,000 ASP when we invested, and growing nicely, honestly, like it was a beautiful business. We only make four to six investments a year, we're very picky, so things were looking good. They were growing 100% year over year, but they knew there was an opportunity to grow faster because they were hearing time and time again from their users, from their buyers, this is amazing. Like, I, why didn't we start this sooner? This is crazy. This is saving us so much money. The ROI was so clear. What we did was we held a, a project for them where we reached out to about 30 of uh, the target personas and we, re we interviewed them and asked them questions to really understand what would make it easier to buy. Well, it turns out signing up, if you're an attorney, for an annual contract, committing to something for big dollars, when you're a technology-averse person, lawyers really don't like to try new things. It's a little scary, right? They s ended up switching their model to pay-as-you-go, and it has made all the difference. So again, it's not like they're giving their technology away for free, but they're moving more in the direction of, of a product-led growth company by making it a, give it, having a little bit less friction to sign up and find value quicker. And what they're finding now is that with this pay-as-you-go model, after a few months of, of using the technology, finding value in it, the teams are signing up for, for major contracts, big deals, because it makes sense now. And it's very easy to prove ROI to the rest of the organization to invest more. So they actually grew their customer base by 500%. In less than 12 months, again, they had been growing 100% annually prior to that. They maintained an incredible satisfaction score despite bringing on that many more customers. They were going to hire a whole bunch more sales reps, but what they decided to do was hire more customer success folks and also put way more money into developing the product. And as time progresses, I think they're just going to continue to put more and more money in the product to make sure that it continues to sell itself, have that viral element, and allow people to upsell very easily. So hopefully this paints a picture of you, uh, for you of how we're talking about product-led growth at OpenView. It's something we're really excited about. We think it's the future. Um, you know, ultimately, it makes sense for companies to start thinking about this and talking about this now, but it does need to start at the, start at the top. So if you're sitting in this room and you're not you know, the CEO of your organization, I encourage you to bring information to your CEO, to your leadership team, and try to build consensus internally around what you can be doing to exhibit more product-led growth um, characteristics. I promise you it will pay off. And with that, I leave you. Thank you. I need some traction. You need some traction. Let's get some traction.